All right, so welcome back to Eco's The First Continent, uh, the strategies involved with each of these footprints. And for this, for this video, the footprint we're going to be going over is the elephant footprint. Now, and this one is really cool because this one over here gives you three victory points every time it's played, and then it gives you an option of placing one of these four animals down. And if you're going to be gaining cards from the deck that potentially have cards to do with antelopes or even storks, those would definitely be good strategies, or even the elephant for that matter. But in the end, it doesn't really matter too much what animals you place down. Personally, I just place a lot of antelope. Of course, if my opponent has that strategy, that footprint, that has a lot of antelope being placed, your next best option is the stork. I would go with the stork most likely because none of the footprints really work with the stork anyways. So this one would be your best bet. And this one would also help your opponent if they've got that footprint that has the hippo. So, because uh, you know, they get a lot of victory points if they have a huge bloat of hippos. If you don't know what a bloat is, it's one of the ways you would describe a group of hippos. You'd call it a bloat. So, if they have a huge bloat of hippos, you're only adding fuel to their fire if you place this animal down. Or even this one, potentially, as well. So, in the end, the stork is probably your best bet of placing animals down. Because in the end, it doesn't really matter too much. Because at the end of the day, you're still going to want to place some animals down. Now, even though this is a really good card and it gives you three victory points every time you play it, maybe it would be in your best interest to only play this one time. Or equal it one time in the beginning of the game. And we'll go over the reason why shortly. Now, this one could potentially help you eco that one very fast because you get to place a tree and you'd get the vine and you'd get the water element and this one has both of those symbols for sure. But, and of course it only needs a couple of sun symbols to do so. And then this one places a lot of grassland or desert. I would go with the grassland for this particular footprint. And then you gain, especially because you would gain a wild symbol per adjacent grassland. So if you're doing a bunch of desert, you're probably not going to get too many wild symbols. So stick with the grassland for sure. So, now, obviously, none of these cards will let you play or gain more cards. So, the dial is going to be in your best interest to try to gain some cards with. Of course, you're still going to want to get those cubes. So, the good strategy to go with is gain a card. The next time it goes around, you should gain a cube. The next time it goes around, you should gain a card. And vice versa. Until you can get some cards, at least, that let you gain cards. So this one doesn't let, doesn't really have that good of a strategy in that regards. But it does have one really good card that is unique to this footprint. So you get to place a grass or a desert, and like I said, grass is your best option. Then you can rotate one of your cards counterclockwise and place a wild symbol on it. Now what does that mean? Well, basically it lets you play a card an extra time. So you know those cards, those pesky cards you can only play like maybe one time? Well, this one will let you play it twice. And then you get to place a wild symbol on it to boot. That's really cool. Now maybe perhaps you'll want to uh, rotate this one once or twice. And I would recommend maybe once, but I wouldn't get carried away with rotating that one too much. There are much better cards to rotate with this particular footprint. And you can echo this four times. So you could potentially rotate four cards. So what would be good cards to rotate? Well, another good card to get in the beginning of the game, which would probably be your next best option, if not your first best option, is this one here. And the reason why I say this one shouldn't be a first, because maybe perhaps you'll want to rotate this one. Maybe. But that's not a guarantee, because this one is best used only once anyways. Why is that? Well, it has a leopard on it, and a leopard requires a tree, so you can't place a leopard if there's no tree to be placed, which is why you'll definitely want to eco this card at least once or twice. Then you'll gain four victory points per adjacent space without any animals. So, if there's a bunch of adjacent tiles around your, your uh, leopard, you'll get four points for each one. But here's the thing, you'll lose two victory points per adjacent space with one or more animals on 
um, with one or more animals, not including this space. So if somehow there's an animal on the space with your leopard, it won't include that. But it will include all of <laughs> all the other spaces around you. And so if there's a lot of animals placed, you're going to be losing your victory points. You're not going to be getting very much victory points. So this is definitely a good first good card to choose, especially if there isn't a lot of animals out there on the continent. This could get you a lot of victory points. And if you have played some cards like this one here and this one, there's some grasslands, so there's and there's possibly some trees, and so then possibly you could get a lot of victory points with just this one card right here. And that's assuming, of course, you didn't play this one that much, and the other players haven't been placing a lot of land animals, or water animals for that matter, on the continent, or around the continent for that matter. But, and like I said, this is a one-time use, so if you were to eco this card over here, before you eco this one, you could potentially play this two times. But, there are other cards better, even better than this to eco. And then of course you would gain a card, and then you could play a card. So, this one would be one that would give you another card, but maybe you'd rather play the card you just gained if it was really good. Now, what's another good card to get? Well, this one here is a good one. Maybe not maybe the best next one. Maybe this is another good card to get as well. Both of these, both of these could be potentially a good next card to get. And the reason why is because you might want to eco this fast, and so the best way to do it would be with this card here, which would give you the antelope symbol for just a couple of suns. So if you want to eco this as soon as possible before a lot of animals are placed, that would be a good choice to get right after this one. Or if you were planning on maybe perhaps rotating this a couple of times or once with the other card over here that lets you rotate cards, you know, this one, you could potentially need this one because this allows you to move up to two animals, four spaces each, so which means you could potentially move all of the animals out of your way, and then that way your leopard is doesn't have any other animals around it, and you could score a lot of points that way. Now, you're still going to want to keep the animals around, and so you're still going to want to eco this as much as you can, at least until after this one's been taken care of. And the reason why is because eventually you're going to come up with this one here, the lion. Ooh. And this is why. So you get three victory points after you place the lion, and then each lion in this community removes one non-lion animal adjacent to it. And it can be an animal that's on the water too, for that matter. And then you gain four victory points per animal removed. <laughs> that's cool. So the first time you play this, you get seven points. That's really cool. And then gain one wild symbol per lion in this community that does not share a space with a tree. So as long as there's not too many trees, you could potentially get an extra wild symbol to boot, or a couple of them. The first time, you might just get one. The second time, you get two because then you place another lion. You get to play this card three times. You get seven the first time. The next time you play it, you could potentially get, um, oh, I don't know, 11 points for, for that matter. And then, you know, 15 points the next time. So you could get a lot of points with this one card too. It's a powerhouse for sure. And if you rotated it with uh, that other card I mentioned earlier, if you rotate it, this card, you could get a lot of lions out there and remove a lot of animals. But remember, this card is contingent on, on non-lions. So there needs to be fodder, or should I say prey, for this animal to eat. If there isn't, if there's just lions left, this one doesn't do you much good. But, probably the other players are placing animals down, and so they are adding fuel to your fire, and you will have a full belly if you'll have some very, very satisfied lions if there's a lot of animals out there for them to eat. So this is a really powerful card. And there are some other really good cards. This one could be potentially a really good one. It also could be even more useful than the other card because this one doesn't give you any victory points because this one moves animals and so does this one. It moves all animals in this habitat one space. So if there's animals in a desert, you could potentially move them out of the way, away from a future leopard. And remember, if there's a mountain in a desert, you can place a tree there. So potentially you could be placing your leopard there anyway. So, 
this could be very useful in that regards. But these are definitely the cards you'd want to go for. And even though there's a couple of other good cards that could potentially give you some victory points like that one, or even this one could give you a few victory points more, you're probably not going to need them. Because you have the Leopard and the Lion, and even that first really good card giving you a lot of victory points, and you probably won't come down to needing these two cards. And then once again, this one isn't as useful as it could be either. So, because you've already been placing trees in the beginning of the game anyway, so you probably won't need to play that other card. But most of the cards here are very useful and could be potentially useful depending on how things are going. But like I said, if you're going to win with the lion, there needs to be a lot of prey. That means there's got to be another person, probably with the antelope or the one with the hippo, placing a lot of those animals for this lion to eat. Because right after all, it lets you remove an animal from a water space as well. So that's really cool, very powerful. So, anyways, I hope you guys liked this video for this footprint. There's only one footprint left, and we'll cover that in the next video.